Okay, today we're at Blue Canyon with golf every second. So I've got two, four, six, eight pitching wedge, sand wedge putter. What have you? What are you using? Four, six, eight. Uh, so four, six, eight pitching wedge. 50, degrees, Golf Every degrees, Second and I play and Blue Canyon, the canyon course in Phuket, Thailand. It's been closed for nearly a year for renovations and the new owner's investment in the course has brought it back to its best. This is the very course Tiger Woods won the Johnny Walker at in the 90s. Check out part 2 on Golf's channel. We're playing half a bag of irons for this 9 and a two-man scramble on the second 9. Removing the big dog and the lob wedge proved perfect for me. Half a bag is something everyone should be doing as often as possible. You'll rarely shoot a worse score than your normal score. Why? Half a bag removes decision paralysis. You hit what you got, nothing else. This is a great exercise in commitment practice. It pushes your problem clubs out the bag. Okay, so how many yards? Uh, 153, yeah. downwind. Uh, I'm gonna go with pitching. 153 downwind. And now, is that gonna be a hard pitching or well, standard? Because we cannot use the 9 iron. Exactly. Yeah, even so, I'm gonna go with the high draw pitching wedge and let the wind take it a little bit. Okay, so it's just a standard pitching wedge, just with the draw, yep. it's gonna add some more. Yes, sir. You remove the over expectation when standing on the tee, knowing you're at an imagined disadvantage, and we all know limitations encourage imagination within the parameters. You might discover you're better than you think and find you have shot making ability and imagination. Golf is such a positive guy, and playing this round showed me what a difference a vibey playing partner makes. We need more players like this in our lives. Okay, okay. Good pace, huh? Ooh, that's beautiful. I spent some time on the range with the Swing Caddy SC300 and found my distances for my 75% swing, my 90% stock swing and my all out 100% swing. With this type of information and drilling, you can turn every club into a triple threat weapon. Golf was explaining that before the upgrades, the greens were shrinking to save on maintenance costs. The new owner, however, focused on increasing the green size to what they used to be. I've seen so many courses turn bad by losing their greens. This is actually the first time I've seen a course take charge and reclaim the full green size. Removing the 58 degree wedge was brilliant for me on this 9. I had the yips with it for a while and leaving it in the car removed the stress of just looking at it. Not seeing the driver in the bag was also a massive relief. Nothing to do with golf, just not having the stressful clubs that made it way more relaxing. I, I forgot to buy balls. <laughs> Play 
that golf and he's just so encouraging that even when he was bad, he's like, whoa. Five yards to the pin, downwind, playing from this grass, so the ball might fly. It's downwind and from this grass, it might fly, so I'm gonna go with 54 degree. Why would it fly? Because, because when the grass gets between the golf club and the golf ball, the grooves won't affect the, the ball, uh, the spin, the ball, so there is no spin. When there's no spin, the ball fly further. Could be good, baby. Could be good over. Slightly past the pin, a little bit. Slightly past the pin from 145 with a 54 degree. What a monster. Why? Hey, guys, reasons he gave me and I was like okay sounds good let's get it so hazardous yeah. which one hazardous smoke 80 grams low spin what, what, a number in the red 6.5 you know something what? I was watching Big Bang Theory with my woman mm. I won't watch that show you know that like that that emblem yeah that means they put that on laboratory doors uh -huh. that means hazardous really oh so the, all these are on that, that chart that says hazardous, and then in each one it has information about the hazard. Wow. I saw it in the, in the, in the show, and I was like, I know that thing. Where's that from? That's from the shaft. <laughs> what a shot. Jeez. What a player. In the three, big left, left side, and right. OK, here we go, girls. Man, I'll, I'll, find, I'll find the sweet spot one day. So now, that you have two shots, right? You have the high draw you just hit with the wind, yeah. and the low squirter with the two iron into the wind, the little one to the left to right. How long did it take you to develop both those shots, to go to the course and go, okay, boom, draw, or and okay, boom, fade? I mean, for me, it came with trying to fix the hook. I used to hook the ball and then, my coach then told me to learn to play fade. And then I learned to play fade. He gave me some ideas of how to hit the fade. And then since then, I was like, this is kind of a cool shot to have as well. So I started practicing both shots. And how long does it take to, to get on the course and be confident that it's going to be perfect? Quite, quite a long time. But if you practice a lot, then usually it won't take too long. OK. If you don't practice in the Yeah, but you also, long. one thing I've noticed now since I went to the range, I'm not used to hitting consecutive golf balls on consecutive days. I did 10 days straight of just two buckets, three trays, four trays, five trays. Yeah. And I'm not used to it because I'm a golf course player. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to the range to go to the opposite extreme. Yeah. And if you're not used to doing that, yeah. it, it does more harm than yeah. good, I yes, think. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So this is like my third time on the course, but I've been on the range like 15 times. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, like a guy, a guy ne who, who never goes to the range, driving range, if one day decided to go to the driving range, have, we will have a bad round. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> On this shot, I was thinking about golf shot. Notice how, because that was top of mind, I copy pasted, and as usual, when I try to do that, I pull it.
just like that, out of nowhere, that pesky double bogey crept up and bit me right in the posterior. Nice drive, nice six. To the bunkers. What do you expect to have in? Okay, maybe if I stay behind it instead of swaying, it's probably work. No, it's okay. We just we just carry on. major lesson from this round was that the two iron is magic and I don't need to stress for distance even on long par fours. I love the ego death. This is Ayahuasca Golf 101. There's one major reason I love the two courses at Blue Canyon. They don't look like any other course in Thailand that I've played. Usually I'm on a course with nothing but water and palm trees. I crave the tree-lined courses of Johannesburg sometimes. At Blue Canyon, the tree-lined fairways and undulated parkland look is completely unique. Over the last year, Blue Canyon replanted the fairways with the zoysia and the newly laid Bermuda greens are looking delicious. The course is set to reopen on the 12th of March and I played it in February. I can't wait to see it in six months. What a course, what an experience. Go check out the second part on Golf's channel. It's epic. <laughs> on this dog leg right hole, I committed 100% to cut the corner on the right. It was a perfect shot, one of my best. You know that feeling when you perfectly cut the corner of a dogleg right and the caddies shout turn and you find out it's a dogleg to the left. Thanks golf. Golf every second. More like golf so very silent. Sweet strike.
shot, baby. Gold was surprised he could play level par without a full bag. It just shows you how used to 14 clubs we all are. What surprised me most was how, even from the tips, I could reach all the greens in regulation. I've decided until I find a shaft for my Ping G400 driver head, I'm going back to my tactic of less driver, more cowbell. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, okay. 